the Lord. Take your seats if you can in person online. You know, it's very important. Please take your seats. It's very important for us to see praise as a weapon. It's very important for us to see praise as part of our prayer. And so, when we do that, we will not be spectators. For many people, you receive your healing when you are praising God. Because when we praise him, when we say that he is the one who is on the throne, that weakness must go. That sickness must go. That migraine must go. When we say that we are victors, no matter what betide, then we are letting out a message into the realm of the spirit. And beloved in the Lord, everything we see in the flesh, in the natural, is born out of something in the spirit. And that is why the things that we do, when they are spiritual exercises, ultimately they will give us breakthroughs in the physical. That is why somebody can come to church, like somebody I'm looking at now, or somebody is watching online, and just lift up praise and run from the back to the front and come and kneel on the altar or lift up his hand or dance or turn around and make a declaration that the God that we serve he has made me more than a victor and by the time the person leaves church and enters the workplace the person will receive a letter of promotion on his table something has been stirred up and by the time the person goes back to the hospital and the doctor examines him he will say that we cannot see that growth any longer something you have done in the spiritual has made a breakthrough for you in the physical so please don't see praising God as a ritual as something that we need to do before we preach see it as and today I'm talking about spiritual warfare the prayer that establishes us that brings establishment one important dimension of that prayer is spiritual warfare spiritual warfare it refers to spiritual exercises cosmic experiences in the world that we cannot see which have an effect on the earth somebody has described spiritual warfare as a fight or a battle or a contest between good and evil and for us as believers for those of you who are very religious, I am sure you know the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10. The Lord's Prayer which Jesus taught to the disciples. He said, thy kingdom come. The kingdom of God, it will come. That kingdom will come through the church. That kingdom will come through spiritual warfare. That kingdom will come when we administer. We are God's hands. We are God's feet. We are God's eyes and God's ears. His kingdom will come. His will will be done on the earth as it is in heaven through spiritual warfare. That is why the apostle Paul in his wisdom tells us in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12 that we are in a wrestling match and that wrestling match is not against flesh and blood it's not against your brother or your sister or your uncle or your nephew or your grandfather or your boss or that supervisor of yours but it is against certain a hierarchy of evil and that is why jesus said when you pray pray that 
that the kingdom of God will come because there are principalities to be defeated. There are powers to be defeated. There are rulers of the darkness of this world to be defeated. There are spiritual wickedness in high places to be defeated. So when we engage in spiritual warfare, then that is how we will cause the kingdom of God to come and there will be establishment. And whether you like it or not, if you are a believer, you are engaged in spiritual warfare. Hallelujah. So we must, for us to have victory in spiritual warfare, first of all, we must recognize that we are engaged in a warfare. First Peter chapter 5 verse 8. And I am praying that we will have a revelation of spiritual warfare. And when we have that revelation, beloved, when you come to church, what you do will just be a a manifestation of your revelation. You cannot be a spectator. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, we have an adversary. There can be no warfare without an adversary. And the adversary, beloved, is not somebody with flesh and blood. It's the devil. The devil can work through people. Don't attack the people. Attack the devil. Hallelujah. It says, because your adversary, the devil, like a roaring lion, he's walking about seeking somebody to devour, somebody to discourage, somebody to inflict disease upon, somebody to bring down, somebody to destroy. We must be aware of this warfare. Our denial of the warfare does not make it any less real. So I deny that the devil is there. The devil will slap you left and right. Hit you below the belt. So you better be aware of it, my sister. Better be aware of it, my brother. He said, be sober, be vigilant. Why? Because there is an adversary who is walking around. Spiritual warfare, we must come to what the French will say, praise the conscience. We must understand that you are in the warfare. There is a warfare. And the one that we are fighting against is the devil. And if prayer will bring establishment, it's the warfare kind of prayer. Hallelujah. And he said that that devil, he's going around like a lion. That means he's not a lion, but he's behaving like a lion. He's a paper lion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Eh? Yesterday I was somewhere with somebody very important to me sitting on a wooden horse. You know what a wooden horse is? Wooden horse, if you're a child and you're sitting on a wooden horse, you think it's a proper horse. And when you sit on a proper horse, you, want, you, need, you expect the horse to move. So you'll be there, moving. Achiaya, achiaya. And the horse will not be moving because it's a wooden horse. So the devil, so, so this my very good somebody close to me, you no. Know, he was hitting the horse. Horse, move, move. The horse was not moving. The devil can only come like a roaring lion. He is not a roaring lion. The only lion that we know is the lion of the tribe of Judah. His name is Jesus, and he is on your side. But he says, in John chapter 10 and verse 10, I'm getting us into the midst of the message, that the devil, this same devil, he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's what I'm saying. Let us be aware of this warfare. He says that it's the thief who is the devil. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. So this is the warfare. The devil who wants to kill and Jesus who wants to give you abundant life. In the middle is you. You must wish the warfare. So that when the enemy comes to kill, your joy, your peace. Some of you come to church and you are sad because of the shoes you are wearing. You are sad 
Because when you're ironing, you bent the dress that you wanted to wear. So you've, you've worn the second dress. So you are sad. If any usher crosses your way, the things that will come out of your mouth, even the devil will be disappointed, will be, will be surprised. He said, it's the devil who comes to steal your joy, your peace. You don't have money, but you can still be joyful. Because the silver and the gold, they belong to our God. If you don't have money today, it doesn't mean that tomorrow too, you don't get money. And so long as there's a tomorrow, my brother, there's hope for you. If you get a disappointment today, it's only preparing you for an appointment tomorrow. Is somebody hearing me? If you fail today, on every road of success, there's a certain junction. That junction is called failure. If you don't pass that junction, you never get to the place of success. Talk to anyone you want to talk to. Spiritual, academic. The devil, the thief, comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus, he came to give us abundant life. In the middle, that is where we are. And the process is warfare. Spiritual warfare. And that is what we must be involved in. In Zechariah chapter 10 and verse 5. Zechariah chapter 10 and verse 5. Let us get engaged in the warfare. Be engaged in the warfare. Don't dodge the warfare. Those of you who are still dodging mathematics. Don't dodge the mathematics. Face the math. Mathematics is the easiest subject. Why do I say that? If they tell you to write an essay, my best friend, you can write all the English. They'll never give you 10 over 10. The best will be seven and a half over ten. You have written all the vocabulary you know. But when you get seven to the second power, it's equal to what? What is seven to the second power? Your mass is weak. When you write 49, will they give you nine over ten? Give you ten over ten. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, he said, and so, so engage the mass and overcome the mass. I was talking about mathematics. Yeah. Because a lot of people are afraid of mathematics. Overcome it. Otherwise, by the time they are going to make you manager and director of the company, they will check your certificate. What's the certificate? Maths. Z1. Or what did you give you? He said, and they shall be as mighty men which tread up or down their enemies. So we must engage the enemy. They tread up, they don't run away from their enemies. They tread upon their enemies. In the mire of the streets. In the word battle. Spiritual warfare. You must engage. There must be engage. The battle must be engaged. When you read the Bible, when you read the people of Israel, sometimes they'll be standing. Israel will be on one mountain. The Philistines will be on another mountain. They'll be shouting at each other. They will be making noise. Then God will give an instruction. Hey, David, go down with the army. Engage the Philistines. That is how you get your victory. No engagement, no victory. You cannot dodge the enemy and have victory. He will pass behind you and he will pull you down. Engage the enemy. He said, and they shall be as mighty men, mighty women. They tread upon the enemies in the mouth of the streets in the battle. And they shall fight. Because the Lord is what? With them. And the riders on the horses shall be confounded. For us to be successful in spiritual warfare, let's engage the enemy. Hallelujah. Let's engage the enemy. Don't deny that the enemy is there. Engage the enemy. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 3 all the way to verse 5. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty. A weapon that is mighty to pull down the stronghold, it can, you cannot pull down the stronghold if you have not engaged the enemy. You must not be afraid of the enemy. And their enemies in our lives. He said they will go around the streets. He said that they will battle. 
He said that the riders will be confused because they have engaged the enemy. Stop running away from your enemy. Whatever description you give to that enemy, for effective spiritual warfare, we must not just only be aware. Me am aware, hallelujah. When the gentleman wears a trouser, and the trouser is falling down from his waist, he said, brother, your trouser is falling down. We are seeing your shorts. Say, me am aware. I am aware. When I was coming to check, that was my plan. I am aware. I wanted you to see that I'm wearing yellow shorts. So you must be aware and then you must engage the enemy. Engage him. One thing that we must understand, the Bible tells us that there is a purpose for every season in our lives. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. And so, in a season of your life, when you are expecting something and the thing is not coming, I want to suggest to you that engage the enemy. Because the devil who comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Your destiny is not to fail all your exams. Your destiny is to be more than a conqueror. So when you have passed, fail the exam the first time. Fail it the second time. Third world war hasn't come. But you are entering the third one. Engage the enemy. Say that I am more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. Don't just sing it. Engage the enemy. Don't be afraid of the enemy. He said, I came to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. You can see your life is not abundant. You are struggling from one borrowing to another. Engage the enemy. He said that the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. But they are mighty. That's why I was using praise as a weapon. They are mighty through God. If we are going to have effective warfare, let us remember what the Bible tells us also in Mark chapter 3 verse 27. That when you enter a strong man's house, you cannot, uh, you cannot get the things in the house until you bind the strong man. There are strongholds in our lives. We must meet them boot to boot and pull them down. Stop saying, ask for me, ask for me, ask for me. No man likes me, ask for me, ask for me. My legs are like as our legs. My, ask for me, no one likes me. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You will marry, you will have children, but meet the enemy, meet the enemy. That strong man in your house, that strong man in your lineage, that says that in our family, we do not have white wedding. Every wedding we have will just be knocking and engagement. Meet that strong man. The Bible says he will enter the house, bind the strong man. So you can enter that house and get the things that are in the house. Mark chapter 3 verse 27, he says that no one can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man and he will spoil his house. There are strongholds in our lives. You are wearing a nice dress, but under the dress, stitches, growths, you cover it well with your dress when you come to the church. It's a stronghold in your life. One sickness after another. In spiritual warfare, we must bind the strong man. Bind the strong man. Everybody who gets married, by the time they have spent five years in marriage, there is divorce. You, have ent you are entering the fifth year of your marriage. Now you are seeing that the divorce is coming. Live and call it. Rise up. Bind the strong man. Spiritual warfare. Bind the strong man. Bind the strong man. Enter the place of prayer. Bind the strong man. Whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Matthew chapter 16 verse 19. And whatever we lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. When Jesus said that I will establish my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. In verse 19 of Matthew chapter 16. The Bible says that whatever we bind on this earth. Will be bound in heaven. Don't wait for the pastor to bind. You too, you can bind. Don't wait for the elder to bind. You too, you can bind. Hey! All your friends are getting married. 
You are every time. You are perpetual maid of honor. Perpetual best man. They've given you an award. Best man award. You alone. And the time is passing. You look in your family. Nobody is, is getting married. Your elder brother is not getting Your elder, elder brother is not getting married. It's a strong man. You must bind a strong man. Don't say that that is my shebre. It's not your shebre. Our shebre is in the word of God. Anything that the word of God says for you, it means you can have it. If we delight in the Lord, he will grant us our heart's desires. The thing you are looking for, God will give it to you. There's a strong man. Bind a strong man. And stop playing to crow crow with it. Stop fighting the devil with kids' blood gloves. You are old. You have become, become very old. And there's nothing to show for it. Bind the strong man. I will give to you the keys of the kingdom. And verse 19. He says, and whatever you shall bind on the earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you shall lose on the earth or allow on the earth shall be done in heaven. So let us engage and then let us bind the strong man. There will be a strong man in your house. You know where the strong man is. Lift up your voice. Take advantage of every opportunity to pray. And in your prayer, don't just pray general prayer. I am binding this strong man. I am binding this strong man in my house. This thing that is not allowing me. When I am learning, then the time that it is exam time. That is why, that is when I get an attack of malaria. It's not normal. It's a strong man. Bind a strong man. Then you get establishment. Hallelujah. And if we are going to be effective in spiritual warfare, we must be persistent and we must be consistent. I like the example of uh, 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 Jacob in Genesis chapter 32. When you get the chance and make time, read the whole of Genesis chapter 32. See how Jacob got into spiritual warfare and then something happened. His name changed. Some of us, our names must change. Every time that you are looking for anybody at the last, you are the last one. Your name must change. But something must happen before your name changes. Jacob was going to his brother Esau. He was afraid because he had done him evil. There are people that you have done evil to, but they are still part of you. The Bible says that Jacob sent his servants first ahead. And when he sent his servants, they were met with 400 strong people from Esau's household. They saw that this battle is not for children. The battle in your family is not for children. So when you come to say 10 minutes prayer, if you don't know what is following you, you'll be walking. But when you know what is following you, nobody will tell you to run. Nobody will tell you to run. Nobody will tell you to keep running. And that's why sometimes I see people, we are praying, and then they are chewing gum. I don't understand you. You don't know what is following you. One of these, when you are chewing the gum, eh, the gum, eh, it will lock your tongue. The Bible says he saw, he saw when the, the servants came back to him, he said, okay, let us take a strategy. I'm breaking you into four groups so that in case one group is defeated, the other one will survive. And then he went another step. He said that now take gifts. Take gifts. And when you take the gifts, when you meet him, tell him that this is what Jacob, your servant, he describes himself as a servant. This is what your servant has brought to you. God has blessed me. This is what I'm bringing to you. And then he went further. The Bible says that he got to a certain brook. And then there he left his wives and his concubines. And then he went by himself alone. I think when we get to about verse 24, they're about. He went by himself alone. When it comes to spiritual warfare, my friend, sometimes you need to be alone. Hallelujah. He went alone. He went alone. You know you can be a crowd, but you are, you are still alone. Yeah, so we can be praying. But you're alone. You know, you know what is happening to you. So when somebody is doing anything strange in church, don't criticize the person. 
And somebody is jumping. Don't criticize the person. Maybe the person has not been able to walk. Yesterday I was talking to somebody and she said, Oh, pray for my husband. Meaning, Sani. He said, There's some sickness we caught the husband. I said, Was it diabetes? He said, No. They said something be. They cut one leg. Then the second time they said, The other leg too, the thing has caught it. So now the person, two legs have been cut. You, you are walking. And when you come to church, you don't want to praise God. You don't want to thank Him. Hey! Don't let, don't, don't lose something before you appreciate it. Are you hearing me, young people? Don't lose something before you appreciate it. He said, now Jacob was left alone. And there he wrestled with a man until the breaking of the day. Spiritual warfare, persistent, consistent, until the breaking of the day. Before the end of the year, at least look for one night or two nights when you pray all night. Alone, no music, no praise and worship team. Just call upon God. He prayed all night. And then when he, the, the one he was fighting with saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his garment, of his attire. And the hollow of Jacob's tie was out of joint. Let's go ahead. I want to get somewhere. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let you go except you bless me. Spiritual warfare will bring us a blessing. To bring us a blessing. Listen, it's not too late for you to give you that miracle. It's not too late. It's not too late for God to come through for you. It's not too late for you to marry. It's not too late for you to have children. It's not too late for you to buy a car. It's not too late for you to enter your own house. All you need is wrestle persistently. And he said that, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Then in the next verse, he said, what is your name? He said, Jacob supplanter. And then he said, your name shall now be no longer Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have power with God and with men, and you have prevailed. Somebody put your hands together for the Lord. In spiritual warfare, we will persist until we prevail. May your name change from poor man to rich man. From somebody who is always receiving to somebody who is giving. But to come by spiritual warfare. And there's always a price for spiritual warfare. Because when Jacob finished that fight, he said that the man touched his thigh. And when he came out, he was limping. When you see a man that has succeeded in spiritual warfare, there's always a price to pay for it. There's always a price to pay for it. When somebody gets a reward, the person has paid the price. Spiritual warfare, it will cost us. But it will bring establishment. He was no longer called Jacob. He was now called Israel. Generations were blessed after him. There are generations that need to be blessed. Your children need to be blessed. Your children's children need to be blessed. But it will cost you some spiritual warfare. Wrestle all night. When Herod put Peter in the jail, in Mark chapter 12 and verse 5, the Bible says that the church, they prayed unceasingly. They were continuing in prayer. The warfare was continuing until Peter was released out of that jail. And if you're a Bible scholar, you realize that that did not just happen. When he was released, after that, the jailers, they were killed. Beyond that, Herod lifted up himself and he became, he was eaten by worms. Because the church continued unceasingly in prayer. When we go into spiritual warfare, there is a reward. Your enemies will not prevail against you. That curse in your family will be turned around. They will say that from the time that Kwame entered our home, from the time that Kwame entered this harvest chapel place, the plague has stopped. The curse has stopped. That sickness in our family, which we call our sickness, it has gone away. Jacob prevailed with the man all night. James had been beheaded. The church continued unceasingly in prayer. That is why Paul, by revelation, 
said in First Thessalonians chapter five verse seventeen, "Pray without ceasing." That means it is possible to pray without ceasing. When I pray for one hour, you also pray for another hour. Somebody prays for another hour. Somebody prays for another hour. We are praying without ceasing. That's warfare must come. Let's not run away from it. There are people in this church they have got major miracles. Barren people giving birth. Cancers be healed. It is possible. Spiritual warfare it will bring us a reward. Don't stop and accept it and say that that is my destiny. That is not your destiny. And let me say this finally. That spiritual warfare it will cause us to win souls. For Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 26 and verse 18. As a matter of fact, I believe that that is the most important warfare we must engage in. The warfare for the souls of men. That they will be delivered from hell to heaven. It's good to have your wedding. It's good to have your children to buy your house. It's good to send your children wherever you want to send them. But none of them is as valuable as a soul to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of satan unto god that they may receive the forgiveness of sin and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me this is our prayer that we engage in warfare we come and spend an all night here just praying for souls 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 First Timothy chapter 2 verse 4. This is God's plan for us. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 4. He says that, that we will pray that all men, this is God's plan, that all men, he will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Romans chapter 10 verse 1. The apostles still speaking. He said that I am praying for them. My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel, for Harvest Chapel, for Tesano, for the world is that they might be saved. That is the prayer. That is the warfare. May we spend hours of warfare praying for the souls of men. Because the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4 that these people have been blinded. They have been blinded. The reason why he's telling you he doesn't have, he won't come to church is that his eyes have been blinded. The God of this world has blinded their minds that they will not believe lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, which is the image of God, will shine unto them. How will it come? By spiritual warfare. Let's be on our feet. May we be men and women that will be involved in spiritual warfare. That father of yours can be saved. That mother of yours can be saved. That sister of yours can be saved. But it will take you to enter warfare. Serious warfare. Pray. Pray. Until something happens. Jesus Christ, in all his wisdom, he gave a parable in Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. And he said he gave that parable. And the import of that parable is that men should always pray and never faint. I'm speaking to somebody. Don't faint. Don't faint. Eight years you have been praying, but don't faint. Nine years you have been praying, but don't faint. Ten years you have been praying, don't faint. Because Jesus said, this is it. That men should ought always to pray and not to faint. Always is until you get your miracle. And in the gospel, Bible says, keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 and verse 8. And then in verse 8, it says, For everyone who keeps on asking will receive. Everyone who keeps on seeking will find. Everyone who keeps on knocking, the door will be. Look, I have dreams, I have aspirations. The other day, I was talking to somebody who is older than me, and the person was talking about some new projects. And I said, if that person is talking about new projects, me too, I can talk about new projects. It's not too late. There's still a place in warfare for you. It's not too late. That miracle can still come. It's not too late. God can still make a way for you. You have seen something, but you have not seen everything. 
I want us to close our eyes. Maybe you are in the service today. Somebody has even been praying for you, for your salvation. And today is the moment for you to respond to that prayer. The Bible says that this is God's will. This is God's desire that we will be saved and we will be redeemed from the clutches of the enemy. Today, you want to surrender your life to Jesus. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you. The Bible tells us in John 6, 44, he said that the ones that I call, they will come to me. Today, God is calling you. He's saying, come to me. Come to me just as you are. John 6, 37, he says, he who comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. As every eye is closed, I'm giving an opportunity to somebody. You may also be watching online to surrender your life to Jesus. He is the only one that can give you peace. He's the only one that can give you eternal life. Because for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. You are the one that God is speaking to. Why don't you lift up your right hand? I want to pray for you. You may be watching online. Why don't you lift up your right hand if it is possible? I want to pray for you. You want to say, Jesus, I am surrendering my all to you. I've been running my own race, leading my own life. But today I'm coming back to you. I'm coming back to you. As your right hand is lifted up, I want you to say this prayer after me. Don't let the enemy win the day. He is only coming to kill and to steal and to destroy. But Jesus says that in me, you have peace. In me, you have light. So as your right hand is lifted up, kindly say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, today I surrender my life to you. Come into my heart. Make me your child. Thank you for saving me. And now I pray for you, my brother and my sister, wherever you are, that as you have said this prayer sincerely, may the Holy Spirit come and dwell in you. May your life never be the same again. Because if a man be in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is past. All things have become new. Thank you, Lord. And I want the rest of us to just lift up our two hands. As we lift up our two hands, if it is possible, for you also online, as our two hands are lifted up, I feel like making a declaration that may today be the end of the delay. May today be the end of that sickness. I speak against that anomaly in your bloodstream. I speak against that anomaly in your eye, in your left leg. I declare by the name of Jesus, healing, 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 healing. I release healing streams for you. Kade seketeya, baramama sekeya. The doctor says it will take one year, but I declare that may Jesus the healer complete your healing today. The doctor says it is a strange growth, but I curse it in the name of Jesus Christ. The doctor says you are barren, but I declare that you are fruitful in the name of Jesus. The curse in your family says that you cannot grow and go beyond a certain age but I remove that curse in the name of Jesus and in the realm of the spirit I feel like making a declaration that in the realm of the spirit may there be a change in your name may there be a change in your name spiritually may there be a change in your name when the enemy comes and they call that old name may you not be there I speak a new name for you like God gave the name Israel to Jacob. Whatever and wherever you have gone wrong, I ask for the mercies of God. I declare that where you fell down, may you rise up. 
I declare that where the lights were put off for you, may the new light come on. I declare that what was meant to be a limitation for you, may God break through it by the name of Jesus. Put your hands together for the Lord, somebody. Thank you very much. We want to take our offering. Just take out a very good offering wherever you are. If you are writing a check, write it in the name of Harvest Chapel International. And please, when we pray and we come to services like this, and you have any testimony, any of the pastors is around, just tell us to encourage others that we serve a living God. Don't come to church one way and go back the same way. You must go back better. Let's kindly be on our feet. Bring a very good offering. If you didn't bring your tithe last week and you brought it today, please bring your tithe, your first fruit. You have a pledge to be redeemed. Please bring it. Remember, God loves a cheerful giver. Let there be a smile on your face as you bring the offering. Shall we very kindly be on our feet? Unless maybe you're writing a check or, you know, bringing some money. Thank you very much. Lead us in some praises. Ushers, do your work promptly. Bring your offering, your tithes. This is how we win, win, win. This is how we win. The smoke of my worship breathing upon the air. This is how I win. This is how I win, win, win. This is how I win. The smoke of my worship breathing. This is how I win. We This is how I win. The smoke of my worship breathes upon the day. There's it was fragrance, then it turned to fire. My worship is my word, Lord. This is how I win my battle. There's it was fragrance. Then it turned to fire My worship is my word, boy This is how I win my battle This is how I win, win, win This is how I win The smoke of my worship breathing I want to hear This is how I win, win, win
my worship is my weapon. This is how I win my battle. Let me stretch forth your hands towards these offerings. Those who are watching online, you hold up your device that you use to send in your offering or your tithes. Father, we present these offerings to you. We present the pledges. We present the tithes. Remember your word, which says that when we bring the tithes into your storehouse, there will be meat in your house. And then you cause the windows of heaven to be open for us. You rebuke also the devourer for our sake. So I speak this word over every tithe. And for everyone that has brought a first fruit, I speak your word that when we bring our first fruit to you, you will cause us to have bigger bands. And you will increase us with the increase that comes from you. And Father, you have declared in your word that so long as the earth remains, after seed time, there will be harvest. Let every offering be a seed. Every pledge be a seed. Every donation be a seed. And let it be that after this seed time, there will be a great and a continuing harvest. May your people be rich. May your people be wealthy. May your people be healthy. May your people be strong. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much. Please take your seats for a few minutes. Thank you very much. If you've been blessed, why don't you put your hands together for the Lord? Thank you so much. I, when I was coming to the service today, I met one of our sisters and and uh, you know, I said, Mebuba. She has been through a difficult time, tough marriage. God opened the door for the child to go to Canada. And now she herself, when we are talking about people who have gone to Canada, her name will also be there. God has done it for Akushika. He can't do it for any of us. Don't struggle. Trust God. Hallelujah. If I want to talk about testimonies, she will not close. Somebody came to my office. She said, the testimonies that I have, I cannot finish telling you about them. You go for a test. They said, no, your womb has to be removed. And then you say, oh God, another thing. And then somehow, you pray. You go back. You even go and get an appointment for the surgery. And then you go back. They do Somebody gives you money, says, go and do another test. And then you go and do the second test. And then it comes out. There's nothing wrong with your womb again. And these are people in this church. They are not, they are not in Osro, Osro, Abofo church. And this church. So you're in a good place. Hallelujah. And when I... When God asks another year to our pastors, yes, we pray for them. So we want to pray for Reverend Edward Koranteng, who celebrated his birthday a few days ago. Reverend Koranteng. If his wife is here, Jennifer. I'm not sure if any of the children are here. If any of them is here, they have two lovely daughters. Yeah. Clap for him also so that when it's time, he'll also clap for you. <clears throat> As for him, he always owes me because his wife used to live near my house. And we helped to take care of her, prepare her for him. So kindly stretch forth your hands towards Dr. <laughs> Reverend Corante. <laughs> Just speak a word of blessing into his life, just a moment or two. It's always good to bless. Father, we thank you. Just speak a word of blessing. Just speak a word of blessing. Whether you know him or not, speak a word of blessing. That you continue in the work of God in all diligence, consistency. And with the favor of God accompanying him. This new year will be a year of celebration. To be a year of great restoration. To be a year that the Lord will lift you up beyond your greatest dreams. And I declare that the hand of God upon you will cause you to move from one victory to another. You will build a hedge over your family, over your loved ones. I declare by the name of Jesus Christ that his light will shine through you. Many, many, many lives will be blessed by your obedience. Father, we thank you for this gift you've given to us. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. All right, so kindly cut the cake. And then, um, yeah, you know how to cut it. Your wife is with you. Papa Razi, come and take some nice photos. Beautiful. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear pastor. Happy birthday to you. May God bless you now. May God bless you now. May God bless you now. May God bless you. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. And uh, we also want to acknowledge and I miss today the father of Minister Joe Mettel is visiting us. Dada, thank you for giving birth to Joe Mettel. And please visit us more often. And when Joe Mettel gives you some of the money, bring some to the church. Amen. I will invite Reverend, Dr. Reverend Udate Lamte to share something briefly with us. Then I'll come back and then close. Reverend Odate. Hallelujah. Shall we please appreciate our Father? Thank you so much. All right, I'm here for some few minutes to talk about the Saving Jesus Outreach. By the grace of God, four years ago, uh, by the leading of the Lord and the support of leadership, we started this uh, village outreaches where the students ministry and the youth ministry come together for an outreach. We started from Brekuso, Adeso, and last year, by God's grace, we were in the um, Sogakope. I don't know if the video is ready. We can just watch some two minutes video and then, then I'll announce where we are going this year.
All right. So, so we thank God. This year, by the grace of God, we decided to, or were led to go to Suedro, where we have a branch. And so while we're preparing to go to Suedro, there was a Macedonian call from Winneba, because Suedro and Winneba are very close. So this year, to be a Twin City outreach uh, for Winneba and for Suedro. And um, as you rightly saw, apart from the outreaches in the night, the students, we go to the schools to teach, to do teaching and learning. We go to the communities to reach out. One of the flagship programs for the outreach is distribution of Bibles. Last year, we gave in excess of 1,000 Bibles. And um, one Bible is 30 Ghana cities then. I mean, now it's ranging between 35. It's 35 now. And then we also give out food, like we saw, food packages to the aged and then disabled. When we went to Sugar Copy, we thought that the aged and disabled were little, so we did just about 100 packs. And then we made an announcement that they should, when they came, they were in excess of 500. So what we had done, we had to set, I mean, split, because they, they didn't understand. So we had to split, and then uh, it was a great blessing by God's grace. And then this year, um, by the instruction of Dr. Pope, we want to do a free medical care uh, this year too. So um, we are preparing uh, for that. So from the 19th to the 22nd, we'll be in Winneba. And then the next weekend, we'll be in Suedro. We want to encourage you to give generously. There's a short code that we have uh, to support the work for the Saving Jesus Outreach. Our budget is in excess of 100,000 cities. So let the Lord uh, minister to you to support us. And if you're a youth here, please uh, plan to be around. We are going in two batches. So the first batch will go for the Winneba, and then the second batch will go for the Suedro. Thank you very much for your attention. And God bless you. Let's put our hands together once again for <laughs> Reverend Odate Lamte. Uh, let's, uh, let's support these outreaches, these missions. This church is a mission oriented mission uh, church. So, when God is blessing you, remember it's for the missions. We've seen this, the short code or short code, short code, two, three, four, something, something, something. Um, so, budget of 100,000, a few people can even support that. If you have a business, let your business sow into this mission. Hallelujah. Um, we want to acknowledge those who are visiting us for the first time. If this is your first Sunday of visiting us, can you see, can I see you show by your hand? If this is your first Sunday. This is the first Sunday that you've come to this church. Is anyone like that? That is your first Sunday. You've come here Tuesday, Friday, but this is your first Sunday. <laughs> Can I see you? Can you please stand up if you raised up your hand? Can you please stand up if you raised up your hand? Oh, are you clapping for her? Somebody else. Oh, beautiful. Another person. Somebody else here. Look at the person sitting next to you. The person's face is in you. Tell the person to get up. Help the person to get up. Is there anybody else? It's your first Sunday. Are you clapping for them? How do we welcome them? What do we say? That means you are very welcome. Is there, we'll pray for you before we close. Um, is there anybody who is here for the second time? You came last Sunday and you are here. And I see you show by your hand. You came last Sunday, and you are here. Is there anybody like that? Where are you? Where's your hand? You came last Sunday, you are here. Can you also stand up and let me see you? You came last Sunday. Clap for her. Clap for him. Clap like we are really welcoming them. 
Thank you very much. When the first time has come, I want you to also join them. It's very good to come to church. If you don't have a regular place of worship, we come and have a chapel to you. If you do, be a regular visitor here. Amen. All right, uh, we are about to close. Thank you for your patience. Can you show by your hand if you don't have the anniversary cloth? If you don't have the anniversary, you have, if you don't have one, <clears throat> can you show by your hand if you don't have the anniversary cloth? Show by your hand. And then ask yourself why you don't have the anniversary cloth. <clears throat> you know, there's going to be a very big service and it will happen in less than a month's time. And at that service, all of us are going to put on the anniversary cloth. And one year, the 60 cities. You can make it shirt, kaba. The kaba, you can mix the colors. You can combine it with white or something. But make sure you have the cloth. Don't use the cloth for handkerchief. It's too small. So let me show, see by hand again, those who have, don't have the anniversary cloth. Raise up your hand. You don't know what, what good thing the Lord has for you. And how many of you can pay for the anniversary cloth? Six years in this year. How many of you can pay for it? Those who, all your hands have come down. You can't pay for it. You can pay for it. Those who can pay for it, please raise your hand. Those who can pay for it. Can somebody count for me? Those who can pay for it. Ushers, can you count for me? Those who can pay for it, including my gentleman at the back there. Can you raise your hand? Okay. How many people can pay for it? How many do we have? We are closing. But the cloth, all the cloth we bought, all of them have to be bought by human beings. So after the service, uh, Charles, there's no credit, pay cash. Um, it's 60 cities per yard, 20, 120 per two years. Now, all those who have got beloveds, especially in the choir, pay for your beloved. As for the husbands, I'm sure they'll pay for their wives. And some wives will also pay for their husbands. I'm going to put a, 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 a directive, not a directive. I'm going to put pressure on all the leaders, all the pastors, all the deacons, all the elders. Please. All the pastors, deacons, elders, departmental leaders, all of us. Are you listening to what I'm about to say? All pastors, deacons, elders, departmental leaders, anybody who has held the mic in front here to lead any prayer meeting or any announcement or anything, all of you, all of us, apart from those who have done it already, we are going to buy the cloth for 100 CDs a yard. So we are going to take all your names because we know you can cast out devils. If you can cast out devils, you should be able to pay 100 CDs a yard for the cloth. So if you are uh, an elder like Elder Duncan, for your wife too, your wife too is inside. So this one is not difficult for us to get the names apart from those who have done it, like Reverend Chrissy Dixon, all of us, we are buying the cloth for 100 CDs. If you bought 100 CDs, you buy again for another 100 CDs. Yes, we have to. Are you happy? Yeah. Let's be on our feet. We are about to close. And then I want to make a suggestion. Everybody who has a business, who has a business in this church? We are close. You have a business. Seamstress, tailor, mason, shop owner, 
business consultant. When I came to church, I met somebody. She has changed like three jobs in three months. Businesses. It's we, the church members, who buy the cloth. If you have a business, can you show by your hand? I want to pray for you. <laughs> I want to pray for you. If you have a business, please come. I want to pray for you. If you have a business, please come. I want to pray for you. I want to pray. Businesses, I want to pray for you. Please come. I want to pray for you. If you don't believe my prayer, I want to pray for you. Yeah. Like Hastin, I want to pray for you. Anna, Alice, Ethel. Ah. So this church, people have businesses. If you have a business and you are sitting there, that means that on Sunday you are telling lies. Please, just allow me. Just allow me. Oh, thank you. Businesses. Is uh, Larry coming here? Or his wife? Are they here? He has traveled. His wife, Tio, come. Where is she? Anybody who has a Tracy, you have a business. Andy. All of you with businesses. I want to pray for you. I'm waiting for you. Constance. I want to pray for you. We are a very strong church, oh. Very strong church. Anything in any other church, we have it here. You want doctors, we have. Lawyers, we have. Engineers, we have. Business, we have. Directors, we have. Assistant directors, we have anything that any other church has. Very soon, we'll get ministers and parliamentarians. I want to pray for you. After I've prayed, please close your eyes. Businesses, Mary, Edun Chumwa, I'm praying for you. Chief Vincent, because your business, too, there's warfare in it. You need some breakthroughs. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray for every business represented here. I ask for increase. I ask for profit. I ask for multiplication. I ask for good favor. And I declare that even as these ones serve you with their substance, you, Jehovah God, will cause barriers to break for them. Let them enjoy great wealth. I speak transfer of wealth from the wicked to you as you walk in wisdom and in divine obedience. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, for all the businesses, I'm not taking your names or anything. The video will show all of you, so there's no problem. <laughs> we will come to you individually. I want all of you to sew into the anniversary cloth. All of you sew into the anniversary cloth. All of you. Take it personally. Sew into the anniversary cloth. How will you sew into the anniversary cloth? You pay more than the 60 cities into the anniversary club. If we don't do it, nobody will do it. But believe me, when we do it, God will bless us. This is our own. So for all of you, I want you to sew into the anniversary cloth. Instead of the 60 CDs we are taking, or maybe you've bought some already, sew into it. 100 CDs, 200 CDs, 60, 70 CDs, but sew into it. And then we will follow each one of you personally. Give ourselves between now and the next two weeks to do that. We will do it. And we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Thank you very much. All of you. Some of you. I mean, the video. Hey, video. Can you take the video very well? God bless you. Clap for them. Wonderful people. You're a great church. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. As we close, all those who celebrated their birthday from last Monday to today, could you please come forward? Our first time and second time visitors, could you please also come to my left? All those who celebrated their birthday, we've prayed for Reverend Coranti. You also celebrated your birthday. Is Reverend Nana here? Is Reverend Nana in church? Reverend Nana Fulson, is he in church? Yeah, yesterday was his wedding anniversary. So he will lead the wedding anniversary people. And then all those who are visiting us, first time and second time, please come to my left. Your birthday or your wedding anniversary, please be on my right, led by Reverend Anna Fulsen. Um, clap for them. Please, if you also celebrated your birthday and we didn't pray for you at the time we celebrated it, Please join these ones, please. And then I'll visit us a second time. Minister Emmanuel and Erica, 10 years of marriage. We thank God. Reverend, how many years are you? 30, 29, 27, 28. Fantastic. You also, birthday. Fantastic. Any other birthday? Thank you very much. Please, if it is possible, to stand up. If it is possible. And then we just want to pray. Thank God and close the service. Thank you for your patience. Father, we thank you. Especially for all that you've done for us today. We lift up your man servant, your handmaiden. As they celebrate their 28th wedding anniversary. We speak into this marriage. We declare goodness and mercy. We declare renewal of strength. We speak over their family. We declare that there will be a change in story for good. We declare also that, Lord, as you've brought them this far, grant them longevity. Let the love they have for each other, for their children, grow stronger. We declare, oh God, that as they serve you, according to your word, you will honor them. Remember, Lord, your man, servant, Emmanuel and Erica and their family also. We ask, O oh Lord, that in blessing you bless them. In keeping you keep them. In providing you provide for them. In elevating you elevate them. Let these families be a good example for all of us. For any other family celebrating their anniversary, I ask that the goodness of God will accompany you. You be fruitful in the land that God has given to you and it will be well with you and Father we pray for them celebrating their birthdays we ask oh Lord that in this new year you will be their helper in this new year you will give them famous victories in this new year also you will lift them up above any kind of trouble or contention let it be well with them I declare that this new year will be a year of celebration. And Father, for sending these ones to us for the first time, but also for the second time, we ask that you establish their feet. If there's anyone who accepted Christ during this service, you can quickly come and join them wherever you are standing. You can just move with your wallet or your bag and join these ones. Father, we pray that their feet will be established in your house. We declare that where they were sick, you give them healing. Where they were confused, give them clarity of mind. And we declare that because they've come here, let every heavy load be lifted up and show them your kindness. And now, dear Lord and Father, we declare that we are simply trusting you. We are trusting you through every stormy way. Even when our faith is small, we will say that we have our confidence in you. We are trusting you for victory in every battle. We declare that today you will cause us to use even the weapons and the armory you've given to us to obtain great victory. Strongholds are coming down. Curses are being reversed. Sicknesses are leaving our bodies and the bodies of our loved ones and our families. Weaknesses are being turned to strength. Darkness is giving way. 
your light is making way for us. I declare that for every season in our lives, as we call upon you, may the purpose for that season be accomplished. May there be no further delay in the name of Jesus. I declare that in this week, good news will locate us. In this week, we will be helped. In this week, that interview will turn out well. In this week, Lord, you will grant us special promotion. In this week, the sales in our businesses will break all the records. In this week, you will send us good people. In this week, our story will change from a dirge to a song of praise. I come against any accident, any spirit of suicide, of frustration. I declare that there will be a release of your goodness and your kindness. I declare that every journey we undertake will be safe. Keep us from accidents. Wicked spirits sent to torment us. We come against them. We declare that we will sing the song of victory in the streets. And that the riders who are against us, they will fall down from their chariots. I also declare that your light will shine for us. Give us the advantage. Favor us and our loved ones. Now as your two hands are lifted up, please. I declare God's personal blessing for you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord grant you victory in every battle. When you knock upon a door, may the door be open for you. When you dig a well, may you find water. May there be an upturn in your business. Upturn in your education. Upturn concerning that marital request. And I declare that because Jehovah lives, you will also live. I come against any spirit of sudden death. Any spirit of weakness or sickness or stroke or cancer. I declare that yours will be life. Yours will be prosperity. Yours will be abundance. And yours will be good news. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Ah, yes, let's are here to talk to move and deals. It's a joint meeting. Very, very important, you know. So please, just like 10 minutes. So please, I think I'll hand over to Jacob immediately. Thank you. Say hello to somebody. See you. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you very much. Yeah.